Well, hello and welcome to our special World Cup show. I'm your host, Frank Pereira, and with me is our expert and former Indian football team captain, Carlton Chapman. Carlton, welcome and uh, thank you for joining us once again in our studio. Thank you so much. Well, before we begin, here's the lineup of today's matches. First up at 5.30 p.m. is Egypt versus uh, Uruguay at the Ekaterinburg Stadium after Russia and Saudi Arabia last night. This is the second Group A match. Well, the next match, of course, is at 8.30 p.m. at the Krestovsky Stadium in St. Petersburg between Morocco and Iran. It's a Group B clash. Three matches today. The third one, of course, is the big one and probably the match of uh, the uh, group stages uh, at the World Cup 2018 between the two giants of Group B, Portugal and Spain. This match, of course, is at 11.30 p.m. and it will be at the Fish Stadium in Sochi. The first match between Egypt and Uruguay will be a close-watched one with both teams expected to top their group and proceed to the round of 16. With Mohamed Salah recovered from injury, the Egyptian squad is sounding upbeat before the match. Uruguay, on the other hand, are banking their hopes on their two forwards, Luis Suarez and Edinson Cavani. After the opening game between two Group A teams, another Group A clash will open the day. The first of three World Cup games today will feature Egypt facing Uruguay at the Ekaterinburg Stadium. Egypt has returned to World Cup action for the first time since 1990 and were doubtful about their star player Mohamed Salah's fitness after he suffered a shoulder injury in the Champions League final last month. But coach Hector Cooper has now confirmed that Salah is fit and will feature in the game against Uruguay, but hinted that the final decision remained with the player. Está muy bien. Ha tenido una recuperación muy buena, una una tensión muy especial. Ya ha entrenado, ha hecho entrenamientos con nosotros. De todas maneras falta el entrenamiento de hoy. Creo que yo hoy casi puedo asegurar que está para jugar. Salvo que surgiera algo, algún imprevisto a último momento. Egypt is 45th in the FIFA ranking, while Uruguay is ranked 14th. And they are the favourites in Group A, which also features hosts Russia and Saudi Arabia. Uruguay will enter the match with a high morale after beating Uzbekistan 3-0 in their warm-up game. However, there will be some pressure on coach Oscar Tavares, who is preparing to coach in a World Cup for the fourth time. Uruguay's forward Luis Suarez and Edinson Cavani are two big names who can change the game for their side. Cavani was the top scorer in the South American qualifying for the World Cup with 10 goals, while Suarez has five World Cup goals to his name. For Egypt, Mohamed Salah is the man who can lead the team from the front. Salah was the top scorer in the Premier League with 32 goals and he was the one who scored the two goals against Congo, sending his national side to the World Cup for the first time in 28 years. El sorteo, yo me enojé con los periodistas uruguayos que estaban hablando de cuartos de final como si fuera un paseo de salud de la serie. Nosotros dentro de la selección no pensamos así. ¿eh? Y siempre basamos todo en el respeto hacia el otro equipo. In este caso lo, lo tenemos. Both Uruguay and Egypt have faced each other three times in the World Cup, in which Uruguay is unbeaten with one win and two draws. Egypt are winless at the World Cup, drawing two and losing two of their four games. Uruguay have only lost one of their last eight World Cup group games. With both teams looking to seal the game and get those initial three points, it will be an interesting clash tonight. Kumar Abhishek's report for Rajasabha TV. Well, it will indeed be an interesting match tonight, a match between Egypt and Uruguay. In fact, that match is a short while from now. It's at 5.30 p.m. kickoff. Carlton, 
Exciting match between uh, Egypt and Uruguay. What can we expect? It's a very, very exciting match. And basically, this match is, you know, uh, Uruguay has an upper hand on them because they have played much more internationals than what Egypt has played. And they have Mohamed Salah. If he is going to start the match, it will be good for their team. You know, uh, Mohamed Salah, uh, there was big injury scare leading up into the World Cup. Many people thought he might not even make it to the World Cup. How big a factor is he going to be in this particular match? And do you think he's going to start in the first place? Because of the very attacking style of the Uru Uruguayans. The Uruguayans are very physical. They are very physical and if Mohamed Salah starts in this match and if anything happens, he has to rest for the next two matches. So, if he rests in this match and he plays in the next two matches, there's possibilities for them to qualify. Because Uruguayan team has Soares, Cavani and so many players who's playing in the Champions League and in Spain, in Germany. So, Uruguay has a definitely upper hand on them. No doubt, Egypt is a good team. They played very well. But, the only scare is Mohamed Salah. If you were the coach of Egypt, what would you do? Would you play Mohamed Salah today or would you rest him? I would definitely rest him for today's match. Because this match is not so important. If they lose three points also, if they go into the defensive strategy also, if they can gain one point, the next two matches are quite easy for them. Saudi Arabia has already lost a match. After two goals of Saudi Arabia, they lost hope. And Russia, because of the home crowd, they were so excited and they scored five goals for them. So, the next match for them is the most important match for Egypt. If they can beat Russia and they can beat Saudi Arabia also with Mohamed Salah. But this match is very, very crucial. And Uruguayan team is a very big side. All the players from Uruguay, they play into big, big clubs. Right. So, for them to take over Egypt, it's not, it's not, very, it's not a tough task for them. Sure, sure. Let's take a look at the formation as far as Uruguay is concerned. You know, uh, Carlton was talking about uh, some of the uh, big players. They play a 4-4-2 formation. This is a traditional formation, uh, Carlton. Four at the back, four in midfield and two forwards. No, it depends. It depends. It's not 4-4-2. Four, four, you can say one withdrawal, mid, one withdrawal striker will be there. It's the strategy of the coach. How the wingers go, how the midfielders go, how the midfield has to go to attack. It's not about the formation. It's about your team. How your team plays. Basically, we always say 4-4-2, four, 4-3-3. Four, Four, three, two, one. It's all depends on the team. And if you look at how Egypt has played in the recent uh, past, you know they play a different kind of a formation. They play a four-two-three-one formation. You know uh, with Mohamed Salah, of course, uh, in that particular side as a lead striker. Uh, do you think that that's the formation that they should go with, or a more defensive formation? They will definitely today. Today's match, they will definitely go into a defensive defensive game. Because they know the strength of Uruguayans. The Uruguayans has a lot of potential in them. They have come to this World Cup to... They might show the world that they are one of the best teams in the world. Hmm. So, apart from the top four that we have in this time's World Cup, would you put Uruguay also in that list and say, maybe they have an outside chance? They definitely have an outside chance. Uh, Soares is one of the world's best strikers. And Cavani is another world's best striker. So, if these two guys get together and they get, get goals, if they get, get a chance to score a goal, definitely they will score a goal. 98 matches, 51 goals as far as Suarez is concerned. We all know how good he is. It remains to be seen what kind of form he is in this particular World Cup. But a big game player, isn't he? He is a very good player. 
and he is a player to watch in every match. He does not give up. The main thing, he does not give up. And he just wants to win the match. Whatever match it is, whether it's a tough match, whether it is an easy match, whether you're playing with a small club, whether you're playing with a big club, he just wants to win the match. And he never gives up. No doubt, he gets a yellow card or red card. He just fights. He just wants to score goals. Sure. Let's take a look, of course, at the next match uh, of the World Cup. That's an 8.30 p.m. start. Ranked 37th in the world rankings. Of course, Iran will meet Morocco at 8.30 p.m. at Kretowski Stadium in St. Petersburg. In Group B, along with Spain and Portugal, the two teams are not expected to proceed to the next round, but they will be fighting it out for pride. Both teams have had a good qualification, conceding very few goals in their campaign. Morocco and Iran meet at the Krestovsky Stadium in St. Petersburg today. It will be a match among equals. Both teams have impressed in the qualifying. Morocco conceded just one goal in their eight games, while Iran let in just five in their 18 qualifying matches. Drawn in the same group as 2010 winners Spain and reigning European champions Portugal, proceeding to the last 16 looks like an uphill task for both. Morocco is the lowest ranked team in the group, but they are not too deterred by it. For us, the equation is very simple. We have three teams who, hierarchically, in the class of FIFA, are superior. Et on préparera, on a préparé le match contre l'Iran de la même façon qu'on préparera le match contre le Portugal et le match contre l'Espagne. Morocco's captain is Juventus defender Mehdi Benatia, with their squad also including Real Madrid defender Ashraf Hakimi and Wolves midfielder Romain Saez. Donc on a encore plus de, de saveur cette Coupe du Monde. On sait. On sait ce qu'on a dû faire pour aller, pour pouvoir participer, pour, pour pouvoir être aujourd'hui là devant vous. Donc on a vraiment envie de, de faire quelque chose de grand pour, euh, voilà, pour prouver une fois de plus qu'on est, qu est un pays à respecter et qu'on a des, des armes à faire valoir. Iran est coached par le portugais Carlos Queiroz, qui est en train de faire son second consecutive World Cup appearance avec le team and has also coached South Africa and Portugal at the tournament. The team has been beset by off-field troubles in the run-up to the World Cup, but that has only strengthened the unit. Mais convictos de que tem que ser uma família e com coesão lutarem e jogarem, mostrando a tudo e a todos que são jogadores que amam o jogo como quaisquer outros jogadores do mundo. Vale a pena, há muitos homens que não deixam a ver, há muitos mardos, um bedam que mo farda, na farda farda tu har seta wazi, ba tamam a bujudam, az tamam a junam a maia bezarim, que inshallah betunim que ham esme que esfer mano, ham mardo me mano sar bolang. The Iranians have won one match at a World Cup in five appearances never getting past the group stages. At 37th, Iran are four places above Morocco in the FIFA World Ranking. The team's striker, Sardar Azmoun, has scored 23 goals in 33 international appearances. Raj Yadav's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Group B, uh, Carlton, is, uh, is a tough group for both Morocco and Iran because they have uh, Spain and Portugal in it. No one expects Morocco and Iran to go through, but then they, they are in the World Cup, they are going to fight it out. Definitely, definitely. Iran is one of our Asian's biggest teams in Asia. And Morocco, 
they have a little slight slight upper hand of Iran because many players are playing in Europe. Some players are playing for Real Madrid, some players are playing for big clubs in Europe. So they have that international exposure. But as of Iran, none of the players are playing in Europe. And if Iran as an Asian country, if they perform at the fullest, they can definitely go through. What kind of a game do you think Iran will play? Will they play an attacking game? Will they play a defensive game? What can we expect from Iran? See, Iran is above Morocco in the world ranking. They'll definitely want to beat them. So they will definitely play an attacking game. Because Morocco is much more ranking than Iran. Hmm. So Iran will definitely try to take the upper hand. But they should not lose focus, like how Saudi Arabia lost focus. If they lose focus, they will pay the price. The only thing is, Morocco has a lot of international expo exposures, which Iran, you know, in a debate, Iran does not have so much of international exposure. Right. But an important match for them both, because... Both the teams will have to play Spain and Portugal next. Yeah, it's a difficult task to play against Spain and Portugal. It's a difficult task because Spain and Portugal, you know, both the teams, most of them are in the biggest leagues in the world. And they get so many matches to play. Throughout the year, they get matches to play. And which Iran does not have so many matches to play. Like how Spain and Portugal has so many leagues, they come to so many championships, they play so many championships, but Iran does not get that exposure. So Morocco has a little upper hand on Iran because they have a lot of players who is playing in Europe. You know, and as far as uh, these two teams are concerned, they have nothing to lose at the end of the day. They are in the World Cup, so they are going to put their best foot forward. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, I have nothing to lose. I just have to prove my worth. If I prove, I will get somewhere. You just have to go out there and give your best. Sure. So let's talk about the big match of uh, the day today. 11.30 start between Portugal and, uh, and Spain. These are two big sides that are expected uh, to make it through to the next round easily. The top Contest between two Iberian rivals, Portugal and Spain, has seldom failed to captivate the audience. The edgy fight is not just between the style and technique of contrasting nature, but uh, the narratives of the history as well. The two will lock horns in a mouth-watering contest of Group B tonight. in the two major tournaments, the World Cup and the Euro, may have produced only four goals, but the contest has remained red hot between La Roja and Selesau. Spain, the winners of the World Cup in South Africa in 2010, is one of the European powerhouses Portugal with Real Madrid star Cristiano Ronaldo are the defending European champions. Cue the celebration. For Spain, the tournament began early with an unpleasant off-field event when national coach Julian Lopetegui was fired on the eve of the tournament after he signed up as Real Madrid's next coach and he was replaced by former skipper Fernando Hierro. Es una realidad que es imposible cambiar en, en estos dos días y, y se verá la España reconocible, la España que, que quiere jugar bien, la España que, que quiere ser protagonista, la España que con nuestras características que la tenemos muy clara. Nosotros no vamos a dudar de ni un ápice de, de, de nuestras virtudes, de nuestros conceptos, de, de lo que representamos y de lo que llevamos haciendo mucho tiempo. ¿no? Eh, esta selección eh, lleva jugando al fútbol muy bien mucho tiempo, la verdad. 
Portugal too is suffering from disquiet within, but fans have high hopes from its star-filled lineup led by five-time Ballon d'Or winner Cristiano Ronaldo, regarded as the best footballer in the world today. The team also has rising stars in young players like Cedric Suarez, Bernardo Silva, Bruno Fernandes among others. Preparamos para isso, estamos física e mentalmente preparados, a equipa está confiante, sem presunção, porque isso também nunca temos, respeitamos todos os adversários e obviamente uma grande equipa como a Espanha ainda mais, mas com a confiança de que somos capazes, que temos qualidade e que podemos defrontar qualquer adversário sempre com esta ambição natural de procurar vencer o jogo e é isso que amanhã vamos procurar fazer. Portugal and Ronaldo's worldwide following has made Seleção at least the favourite in the opening game. Cristiano Ronaldo is definitely going to play. I think that they don't stand a chance. So Portugal, most definitely. But on the other side, Sergio Ramos' side is not to be discounted away with. Fans are rooting for the younger attacking players who have since the last World Cup matured into bigger roles. Portugal tiene a Cristiano. Creo que a nivel individual tiene más jugadores en sus en sus posiciones mejores creo que Portugal. As the match kicks off on Friday night, all eyes will be on 33-year-old Ronaldo possibly playing his last World Cup and whether he will be able to add a World Cup victory to his illustrious resume. Bureau Report, Roger Sabha TV. Carlton, a very interesting match at 11.30 p.m. Probably the match, it could be, be the match of the tournament and that's something that we're getting in the second day of the tournament itself. Spain versus Portugal on paper. Spain look a far better side than Portugal, but you can't po count Portugal out because they have Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, obviously this match is a cracker and definitely this match will be one of the best matches in the World Cup because Spain, Spain, Real Madrid and Barcelona, they have most of the Portugal players. Most of the Spanish Pl players, sorry. Most, Spain, uh, Barcelona and Real Madrid as most of the Portugal mm -hmm. players. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the Portugal players know how the Sp Spanish people play. So it's not a difficult task for them. If in Spain's list, they have almost all the best players in the world. But in Portugal's list, they can read the game. They can read how Spanish people play. The Spanish players play. And they will definitely come out with a strategy saying that, okay, you play like this. We are going to play differently. And especially Ronaldo. He is going to come out in a different set mind. And he will definitely do something different. Hmm. What he was playing in Real Madrid. And, you know, basically, all the players, when they come to play the, when they come to play a match, definitely they know how you play. Right. And they will change the strategy. Sure. And as far as Spain is concerned, you know, the last minute change in coach, do you think that that's going to be playing on the minds of the players? How much of an impact does a change in coach just before a tournament yeah. have on the players? Fernando also is a very good, he was a very good player. He played for many years in Spain and he is the coach now. But it will definitely change the mindset of the players that the coach has left, why did they leave and what not. But Portugal will be definitely focused on that and they'll try to take advantage of that. And talking about focus, the focus will also be on the man on our screens right now, Cristiano Ronaldo, 150 matches, 81 goals. He's quite a player, isn't he? And definitely he wants one additional name in his biodata because he has got everything but not the World Cup. So he will do anything to get this in his hand and he, it will go into history books. Recently they open, opened a museum about him 
and if the World Cup is there, now he's in top form, and he won Champions League. Scored a beautiful volley in the semi-finals. Definitely, he will want to win this World Cup to add to his career, and definitely he he will put pressure on his team. He's like a one-man army, and sure. definitely he will guide his team to this final. No doubt, Spain. Spain is a very good team, but it depends on how they play. Right. Last year, last World Cup also, they lost the first match to Iceland. So, they will put all this into the consideration, and they will definitely come out with a very, very good spirit, so that they take out this match. Sure. And they don't want if they don't get three points also, they should get one point at least. All right, that's as far as Portugal and Spain are concerned. Of course, that's a match that everyone is looking forward to. It will be the big contest of uh, the group stage of the World Cup, and uh, it's going to be a mouth-watering contest between Portugal and Spain. Moving